This video will cover the strand of life sciences. First, I'll give you an overview and a description of life sciences, which covers um, li living things. And then I want to show you an activity that falls under this strand. So watch till the end so you can see this activity that actually involves my cat. Life sciences allows children to explore and observe living things that are in their environment and also in the world, such as animals, plants, and insects. There are two substrands under life sciences. One of them is the properties and characteristics of living objects and materials. And this includes characteristics of a wide variety of animals and plants that you can teach to the children, and also habitats of different animals, plants, and people. And so for example, in the picture you see, there's birds and where do birds live? They can talk, you can talk about nests and how do birds build their nests and where do birds build their nests? Also, maybe comparing what types of animals live in colder environments versus hot environments and different types of plants that you'll find in these different types of environments. The other thing that you can talk about under this substrand is the body parts of animals and humans and also different parts of plants and processes of humans and animals and plants, which includes um, sleeping, eating, and breathing. Also, if you continue to teach um, children about birds, just like in the previous example when we were talking about nests, and, and then so then you can talk about um, different parts of a bird. You can ask the child what helps the, ch um, the bird fly, and they can identify their wing. And then also you can point out the beak, and why do birds have beaks, and just different types of birds, and compare and contrast different types of birds and their parts. An important concept for children to learn in this strand is to distinguish between living and non-living things. Some properties and characteristics that distinguish living things over non-living things include growth over time, the need for food and water, the healing and regrowth when damaged or hurt, and having a life cycle, such as going from a seed to a sprout to a plant, or going from a baby to a child to an adolescent to an adult. So by knowing these properties and characteristics, children can learn how to distinguish between things that are living and things that are not, and identify that a flower is a living thing and rocks are not. The second substrand of life sciences is changes in living objects and materials. So through this, children learn that things grow over time. So for example, if you take a handprint or a footprint of a child at the beginning of the school year and, and then again at the end, and they see that their foot has grown, they can say, my feet have grown over the school year, or that they can just compare, my feet are bigger at age four than it was at age three. And also this picture shows a um, butterfly and so changes, the children can learn the stages of change from a caterpillar to a chrysalis and to a butterfly. Examples of fields that fall under life sciences include biology, anatomy and physiology, immunology, and nutrition. For the strand of life sciences, the activities that you will choose will be about living things, and often they'll fall into one of two categories, either plants or animals. Now plants is a little bit easier because with the classic experiment where you can grow beans, you just need a plastic cup. So this is just one example, a plastic cup. And then um, some cotton balls and some easy to grow seeds such as peas. So just dampen the cotton balls just a little, not, not too wet. Oops, a little bit too much here. Um, and then put that on the bottom of your cup. You can use more. And then what you will do is then put some seeds, or you can put the seeds first and then put the cotton balls on top. Allow the kids to just wait a few days and then to see if that will sprout. And then they can watch a plant grow and then you can talk about the start from a seed all the way to a little pea sprout and they can take it home and plant it in their garden. Another activity that you can do if you would like to teach the children about animals is to read a book about a certain animal. So here's an example, Six Dinner Sid. So you can read about this wonderful story and this book is about a cat. So then you can perhaps show pictures of a cat, 
talk about um, what a cat is and what a cat eats. You know, maybe some of the children have cats as pets, then you can talk about pets. Um, if you show a picture about a cat, you can talk about the different parts of a cat. So, but since I'm filming this at home, I'm gonna take advantage of this and show you our cat. So here is Thor, and Thor is one of our kitties, one of three, we're, we're a little bit crazy. But you can talk about the different parts of a cat, his ears, hey, I'm not a toy. His paws, <laughs> he doesn't have his claws out, I think he just wants to play. His tail, but and his whiskers. Something interesting about whiskers is that it is their sense of touch and it helps them to get to know the environment around them. So if you ever see a cat try to squish through a little square, you know, like for the cat door, the whiskers actually tell them if they have enough room to squish through that door. And so that's what the um, one of the um, purposes of their whiskers are, is to help them to know their environment, to help them to see better in the dark. Hey, what's the deal? So, and did you know, I don't know if he's going to let me do this, but cats also have whiskers on the back of their front paws. And then that way, if they capture an animal, you want to capture my hand? It can tell them if it moves. So, let me see, can I see your paw? No, 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 Thor. <laughs> yeah, so if you look in the back of a cat's paw, there should be some whiskers also. All right, so that's just an idea about how you can teach life sciences to a child. Don't bring a swatting cat to class.